Happy anniversary, Compass family. Hey, Compass Christian Church, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, Compass family. <laughs> happy anniversary, Compass family. Happy anniversary, Compass. Happy anniversary, Compass family. Happy anniversary, Compass Church. We are excited about uh, our one-year anniversary, and it's an exciting time. We wish, I think all of us wish, we were together today, uh, but we're going to make the best of it. You know, like we've done the last few weeks on our online service, we're going to ask you if you want to comment below. You can do the amens or the oh yes or just talk to one another. Um, it's, it's some pretty cool interacting things that we have. And, and the other thing, I just want to introduce myself. My name is E.L. Jones. I'm one of the preaching ministers here at Compass Christian Church. And you're going to see Mike Lynn, the other preaching minister. We're going to be both preaching together this morning. Uh, but we look forward to it, and thank you for being a part of our service. Our rock, the only solid ground As nations rise and fall Kingdoms once strong, now shaken We trust forever in your name The name of Jesus We trust the name of Jesus all your wisdom in love and justice you will reign and every knee will bow we bring our expectations our hope is sacred in your name the name of jesus oh we trust the name of jesus
Hey, welcome again, Compass Christian Church, and to any of our guests that we have with us uh, this morning or this week watching our service. Uh, we're glad that you are here. If you are here for the very first time being a part of our service, we would ask if you wouldn't mind filling out a Connect card to let us know who you are. You can find that in the comment section below on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. And uh, if you're on our church website, you can also find it there. But you can fill out a little bit of information. Promise you we will not sell it to nobody. Uh, but we do want to get to know you. And hopefully uh, you like our service today and you want to get to know a little bit more about us as a church and how we serve our community and how we love on God and how we love on people. So thank you once again for being here. Welcome. Uh, it's great to have you. And, and I'm just excited that we're still able to do a service, even though it's in your living rooms, that we're able to still... Focus on God, focus on his word, and try to better ourselves. At this time, we're going to move into a time of prayer. And before I do that, I do want to ask uh, if we all would just maybe take some quiet time, maybe like 10 or 15 seconds before I pray. And if I can just focus that prayer on our, on our health workers, on the medical staff, um, on our first responders, firefighters, police workers, ambulance, all these guys, we just are praying for them and they, they need not just our prayers, but they need our support, they need our encouragement, um, and, and, and they need us thinking about them at this time. So we're going to just have a little bit of quiet time in your living rooms, uh, and, and we're going to pray, and then I'm going to close this out as we, as we move on through our service this morning. Father, I just want to come to you now, Lord, and, and, and I'm praying, Father, for all of those that are still having to work and serve um, in, in a way that is, uh, it's got to be trying. And, and God, I just want to pray right now that you will bless them, uh, bless their families. Uh, Lord, provide peace in situations where I know that there's a lot of just unknown or uncertainty. And God, I just uh, thank you, Father, for, for their service, uh, for their desire to, to help other people. They're not doing this just for a paycheck, God. They're doing this because they love people. Uh, they have a profession that, that has gotten them in, 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 the, in helping others and, and making them well. And so, God, I, I pray for all of those that are on the front lines of, of what's going on in our society, that you will give them the strength. Uh, that you'll give them the clarity, uh, allow them to have the energy to do the job that is needed to help protect others from getting, from getting this virus. And God, I just pray the, a special protection upon their, their husbands and wives and their kids at home when they have to come back home. And God, I do want to pray for our first responders, all of those men and women uh, serving um, in the police and uh, firefighters and our military and just uh, everyone, Lord. Uh, that you will allow them as well to have clarity, to have energy, to have strength, uh, to give them protection, and to know that uh, the communities, especially here in this community, that we, that we are encouraged by them, that we support them, that we love them, and we care about them. So God, I pray for them now. I pray for us as a church, Lord. I pray that we will constantly be a light in, in the society that is dark. I, I pray, Father, that we will uh, encourage and smile more and just do things that we can do to love other people. God, you have called us. You have called us to be your ambassadors. So as this time, Lord, as we have gathered together as the church, may it be a way that we didn't expect it to be, that we will be the church more than ever right now, Lord. And I pray all this now in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, thank you all once again. And uh, we, we look forward to the, the next song and, the, and for the message and stuff like that. But we do look forward to hopefully getting all back together when all this is done so we can worship and serve and love our God in heaven. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken 
My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. We shame no longer has a place to hide And I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind No, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I Stand a chance when I stand in your love. Oh, I'm standing in your love. Cause there's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. Stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. When I'm standing in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand. Mike. I mean, who would have thought it, right? Uh, who would have? It's been an exciting year, hasn't it? Yep. Before we get going, though, I want to make sure we are at proper... Uh, okay. Uh, How we doing? I think... Oh, we're good right there. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, that being said, uh, you know, our motto this year at Compass, it, it's always been... We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I can't tell you how many times in staff meetings or board meetings or even just me and EL, uh, me and EL meeting, uh, we've used that phrase. But the reason we know that we've been able to say that phrase, if you'll agree with this, I'm sure, is because, not because we're going to be able to handle it, but we trust that God is going to show us a proper way. That's right. And this past year is just living proof of that, where God has just intervened time and time again. But you know, uh, trusting in God is not something new. Uh, Psalm 20, verse 7 says that some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the Lord our God. Isaiah instructs us to trust in the Lord forever because he is our everlasting God. Jeremiah just simply says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And of course, the most familiar passage of scripture about trusting God is what, Yale? It's Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be the verse that we're going to talk about this morning. And what that scripture says, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. You know, Yale, last week you used a passage from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord again. Uh, again, I say rejoice. And, and you, said, uh, you said it reminded you of that song when you were a kid. Yep. And then you went and sang it. Yeah. Well, it's funny, that passage, this passage, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, kind of reminds you of the song that we used to sing as well. Oh, really? Why don't you go ahead and sing nah, that? Nah, nah. Come on, Mike. Come on, let's do it. Let's okay, if you can do it, I can do it. All right, here we go. I think it went something like this. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord. He will make your path straight. Yes, he will. Uh, <laughs> you know that, well, oh, I know it. You know, folks, that's a, not only a great uh, passage of scripture, 
but it's also a great promise. Yes. In fact, I would challenge you, if you have not memorized that particular verse, I would challenge you to do so, because that verse can have such a major impact on our lives. Uh, now, understanding that, what I want us to hopefully do in the next few moments is let's look at some specific ways, if you don't mind, uh, when King Solomon, and that's who actually wrote these words, uh, when King Solomon says that it's most crucial in our life to trust God. Neil, you know what I'm talking about there? Yeah, and our, our first point this morning, what we're going to go over and talk about is that we need to trust God. Trust God when things happen that you don't understand. Uh, I don't know about you, Mike, but that happens a whole lot to me in life. I don't understand a lot of things, and I need to make sure I trust God. See, verse 5 tells us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You know, there's a self-help book on the market. It's called When Life Throws You a Curveball, Hit It. Well, there's a problem with that, Mike. It's not easy to hit a curveball, is it? No, it's not. It's not easy at all. And I would say, Mike and I, you know, we don't hit curveballs all that well. And I think it's safe to say that anyone in the living rooms out here watching us, y'all probably don't either. Or fastballs, sliders, knuckleballs, whatever you want to go at. But in fact, when it comes to our own ability at the plate, we're not all that impressive. And one of the most humbling things, I think, for a guy, and, and this happened to me last year on the softball field, I was playing with the Compass uh, Church here, uh, is to strike out and slow pitch softball by swinging. It's one thing if you get called out on strikes, because you can blame the umpire on that one and say, man, you know what? man that guy can't see nothing. He's blind to the bat. Bad call, blah, blah, blah. But when you swing out of your shoes and miss the ball... <laughs> I just had to hang my head and walk back to a guy, full dugout full of guys laughing at me and joking me. But when life throws you a curveball or a slow pitch softball, it's more likely sometimes you're going to miss. And yet, life continues at times to throw curveballs. And, and there's nothing sometimes in these situations that any of us can do about it. But here's the good news. Solomon says when life takes that unexpected turn or that curve, you do not have to understand everything that's happening. You see, the worst thing that you can do in these situations is try to understand these things or try to handle these things on your own. Now, I want to point this out here. Is, you know, when, when things happen, when things happen that you don't understand, that is when you need to put your trust in God. Can I get an oh yeah? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. Can you write it in the comment section below? <laughs> You know, you can say, God, I, I don't understand why this is happening, or I don't understand this divorce, or I don't understand this business failure, or I don't understand why this friendship's gone bad, or why I'm having health problems. But I know that you know what's going on, and I will put my trust in you. See, there are a lot of things that may be happening in your life right now, and I think there are a lot of things happening in our, in our life, in our society, in our, in, around the world. And, and we don't have a lot of understanding about it. But for example, you know, God has promised to bless our life in these times. And maybe you don't understand right now how God can possibly take the events that are taking place in our life and in our world and turn them into a blessing. Well, guess what, though? God, he can do it. And you may not understand it, but God does understand. It. And God has promised that he will use you in a way that brings him glory. You know, maybe you don't understand how it can possibly use you when you've made a lot of mess in your life, when you've made a lot of mistakes, when you've had failures. But that's the time that God wants us to trust in life. So our own sense of understanding, it's not going to get us through this life. But trusting God when you do not understand, that's what's going to get you through this life. Great advice, Neil. Great advice. Trusting God even when things happen that you don't understand. But a second way, Neil, you know, the second way that we can uh, that we need to trust God is when we're faced with, with decisions in our lives. I probably don't have to convince you that it's a good idea to uh, seek God's guidance when you make those major decisions in your life, whether it's changing careers or whether it's deciding what college to go to or maybe picking up and moving to a different city or even getting married. Uh, but it's not just the big decisions that we need to trust God with. We need to trust God with any decision. Solomon says, and I quote again the second part of that verse, in all your ways, acknowledge him. All your ways. That means in your marriage, as well as your dating life or your dating life, your family life, your career, your personal life, even when you get with your finances. In all areas of your life, God, God's input needs to have a major role. 
That's because if you leave God out of one area of your life, then it leads to destruction in the other areas. You, you know how it is when you were in school and if you got eight out of the ten questions right, uh, you would pass the course. Eighty percent, you pass. My mom would throw a party. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a salesman, if you're a salesman and, and you clinch, what, eight out of ten deals and maybe uh, you're able to do that, you're considered to be very successful. But when it comes to trusting God in all the areas of your life, eight out of ten isn't good enough. Solomon says we have to trust God in all the areas of our lives. I don't know if you realize it or not, but the way that you manage the different areas of your life come down to the decisions that you make concerning that. How much time you're going to spend at the office versus how much time you're going to spend at home. How much, time, how much money you're going to spend on recreational things versus how much money you're going to save for retirement. What kind of music you listen to, what kind of books you read, what kind of television shows or movies you watch. You see, folks, it all comes down to decision. And making a decision the way that God wants you to is the way that you demonstrate your trust in God. It's saying, God, this is not my natural inclination. It's not an easy choice, but it's the right thing to do. And so God, here's what I'm going to do. It's not about what I want to do. It's about doing what you want me to do. It's doing it your way. So he ought to challenge us to include God in our decision-making process and he'll honor our obedience. Yeah, and that brings us to the third point this, this morning, is we need to trust God when the future seems uncertain. I mean, I, don't, I can't find a, a better way to say that, you know, except Solomon does. He says in verse 6, and he will make your path straight. He will make your path straight. You see, when you're, when some of us look at our future, uh, we might not see that straight of a path. You might see something very rocky, maybe steep, maybe a winding road cluttered with debris or obstacles or whatever it might be from your past. See, for some of you, your journey into the future, it's, it's not like you're walking in sunshine or it's got this wide open, beautiful road. It, it's, it's kind of stumbling through the fog or it, maybe it's even crawling sometimes. But if your future seems uncertain, I want to just give you some truth this morning to say that God can handle it with certainty. Because Solomon does say, he will make your paths straight. Now this verse isn't saying that, that God is going to make your life easy, Mike. It ain't going to do that. He's not going to do that. It does mean he's going to make our life more focused. And that's what excites me. He's going to give us direction. He's going to give us purpose. And you will know where you are going and what you are doing. I think one of the things in this point that I really want to point out here is, is you see God makes your path straight by giving you a sense of identity. And I love that because we need identity. And a follower of Christ has that capacity to understand who he is, right? And, that, and that's what, we, it should excite you, it should excite me, no matter what's going on in our life, that we know that we have an identity. And what that identity is, is that we are sons and daughters of the King Most High. And that we're not just sons and daughters of the King Most High, but we are followers of Jesus Christ. And followers of Christ, we have the capacity to understand who God is more than other people because the roles we are to play have been defined to us by His Word and in the Bible. See, trusting God means that you do not have to try to make sense of the areas of your life because He's going to make sense for you. And I think that would hopefully encourage everyone. You know, someone once said this, if you're not sure where you're going in life, if you're uncertain about the future, this is the time to trust God the most. I couldn't agree more. I think there's a lot of uncertainty happening in our world, in our society, in our communities. But right now, Mike, right now is the time when we put our full trust in God. That's right. So what does all this mean? What does it mean to trust God? Well, I can remember the old hymn we used to sing, Trust and Obey. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite lines on that hymn is when it says, Trust and Obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus mm -hmm. but to trust and obey. You know, trust and obedience go hand in hand. By obeying God, you're showing that you trust Him. And in fact, to be honest with you, obeying God is really a way of stepping out in faith and saying, God, I'm going to take your word for it. I, you know more about my life than I do. You know, E.L. Bob, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Bill Hybels tells a story about his first skydiving experience. 
And he said that as he stood on that plane about to jump, he kind of asked the instructor rather facetiously, he said, can I trust my parachute to open? And he said the instructor just kind of looked back at him and he simply responded, well, there's only one way to find out, and that's the jump. And so it's the same in trusting God. Yes. There's only one way to find out if trusting in him works. You have to jump. You have to take that leap of faith. But the wonderful thing is it's not a blind leap of faith. That's right. Because thousands upon thousands of people have tried trusting God and have found that he never fails. You know, you don't have to know all the details about how things are supposed to work. You simply follow the directions that God has given to us in his word. And what are they? Trust God when things happen that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Trust God when you're faced with a decision. And trust God when the future seems uncertain. Amen. Yeah. And that is the advice from King Solomon. But more importantly, it's advice I feel like that all people that call themselves after Christ, we should follow. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to move into a time of communion. We're going to have a song. Uh, and during that song, if you don't have your communion ready, if you want to go get that in your homes and uh, make sure that you're ready. Uh, but we're going to prepare ourselves uh, to do exactly what we just talked about, to, to center our hearts around Christ, but to trust and obey that he is in control and that his resurrection, okay, his resurrection from the dead is giving us life and power and, 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 and so much joy and hope and truth. And so as we move into this time, uh, we're going to do that. Um, after the song, Mike's going to give a communion meditation, and we're going to give you a little bit of time in your homes to, to take these emblems and to remember Jesus. But don't go anywhere, okay? We're going to come back and we're going to say goodbye to you. We've got a few announcements at the very end of this service. When you speak Fades. Just a word And suddenly I'm not afraid Cause you speak And freedom reigns There is hope In every single word you say I don't want to miss one word you speak Everything you say is life to me I don't want to miss one word you speak Quiet my heart, I'm listening When sorrows roll and troubles rage You whisper peace When I don't
this one word you speak Cause everything you say is life to me Everything you say is life to me I don't want to miss one word you speak So quiet my heart, I'm listening You know, Eel and I talked a lot about trusting in God today one passage we didn't mention was the passage in John chapter 14 where Jesus himself said, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. The New Living Translation translates that verse, you trust in God, trust also in me. Folks, I think now more than ever, a trust in God is necessary if we're going to deal with everything that's going on. Someone once said that when tragedy or hardships come in our life, we have one of two options. We can either run from God or we can run to God. I don't know about you, but I'm choosing to run to God. I'm choosing to, as Jesus said, trust in God. I'm especially made aware of that every Sunday as we share in a communion time. Because it's at this time and place where I feel God's presence the most. It's a time when I run to God for comfort and for strength. Today, as we share this communion time, I realize that it may be a little different than what we're used to. And by that, I mean that we're not gathered in our church building around a communion table, but rather we're gathered in our homes, either in front of our television set or our computer screen or, or on our phones. Nonetheless, as we gather this morning, we gather to remember Jesus and his sacrifice. We gather because we have put our trust in him. And so this morning, as you take of the bread that represents his broken body, and as you take of the juice that represents his shed blood, may you remember Jesus' ultimate sacrifice. And may you reaffirm your trust in God. It's at this time that we would encourage you to share in a personal communion time, whether it be as an individual, a family, or a group of friends that have gathered here together. Let's remember Jesus the way he's asked to be remembered. and sharing with us this morning in our worship. We did want to take just a moment and bring you up to date concerning our Moments of Hope Village offering that's been taking place throughout the month of March. Uh, we challenged our congregation back uh, several weeks ago to raise $10,000 to help Moments of Hope, which is a Christian-based organization that's under the direction of our very own Bob Hummer, but to help them raise funds for a village that they would like to have built uh, over the next several years. And so we challenged our congregation to to help raise $10,000 towards that goal. So you ready for this, EM? Oh, I'm ready. Do you want a drum roll? Sure, I'll let's take a drum roll. <laughs> Our range, we raised $13,701. $13,000, EM. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Great job, folks. Great job. <laughs> yep. Yeah.
Hey, well, that is a great job, and it's very exciting. We, we want to make sure not only that we're giving them money, but we're praying for that ministry as well. Thanks again for joining us here at Compass Christian Church. Um, we hope that you enjoy the service, but more importantly, we hope that you are putting your trust in God. Amen.